everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I have got the Making Cards Paper Craft magazine. This is the August 2018. There is now the September issue out, um, but I've got this one. And as soon as I saw it, the card inspiration is brilliant anyway, but as soon as I saw these papers, it screamed to me a little travel album. So these are the papers that you get. And there's some other ones as well, but I'll just talk you through. But look how wonderful all these scenes are of all different countries. France, um, you've got another one of France. Oh, sorry, Normandy, Italy, uh, St. Michael's Mount. Um, and then look all in here, Miami, Spain. Another one of Miami, Santorini. I mean, there's just loads and all there as well. Then you get these background papers, Real Art Deco style so there's that one there's these two and i think there's one more for this one yeah there we go the pink and then it goes on to then something completely different and again i think these are gorgeous and i'm going to be fussy cutting all of these because i do love this magazine um and i'll just quickly show you those ones because i'll probably end up doing another tutorial using these but aren't the aren't the aren't these darling look at little bunny i mean they are just really super cute and then you get the background papers to match so beautiful balloons more balloons they're lovely really really lovely there's very it's very rare this magazine gives me papers that i don't like there might be the maybe one or two that i won't use but generally they are really really good so i'm going to be making a travel album I'm not sure the exact name of it yet because obviously i haven't made it but let's get into the tutorial and see what i do Okay, so what I'm doing first of all is just going through and cutting all of my, let's, let's call them, I guess, postcards. So they kind of look like that. And I'm just trimming them all and you can see what I've done here. And I've left a little, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's about a quarter of an inch, little white frame around them all. And they are just really lovely. I just, yeah, thank you making cards. You know I love your magazine. Um, I forgot to mention as well, I'll add the link to their website because you can buy back copies. You'll still be able to get hold of this one and you can get digital. So if you don't want it posted, because this is you know perfect to have as a digital magazine because it's all papers. So you can just print them off on your own printer. You could print this onto card as well. Um, and always photocopy your if you have the digital copy then you've got it forever but if you don't photocopy your papers um, uh, do a few copies of them just so that then you can use it again so I will share all those links but you can see here I'm just lining up the edge the plastic here with the actual frame and then it gives me that perfect white border on them all um, I don't want to cut into these pictures I want to keep them whole um, I think really this album is just going to be full of mats and layers and pockets and that's pretty it. It's going to be straightforward but I think there's so much colour and fun stuff with these images that that's what I want to be the main kind of focus on this album. So yeah if you've got this just go ahead. If you don't have this and you're doing something then um, yourself and you just want to know the sizes. These images are three and three quarters by four and seven eighths of an inch. Okay, so that's the size that I'm cutting. So if you get whatever it is you want and get it cut down, you can just use nice plain paper, that would be fine. Um, pattern paper, sorry. So I will tell you the amounts and everything again once I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Freestyling at the moment. Okay, so I've got all these letter envelopes. Um, they're in a pack, I think you got about 20. We only needed one, so I've had all these lying around for ages. But I'm gonna use these as my pages um, because they are pre-made pockets. So what I have done is cut, so I've already prepared all of this. Now one thing I didn't realise, a good job I did, but four of the, so one of the pages are actually bigger, the images, can you see there? So this one is obviously bigger. So these ones I'm going to use for my cover. So I think they're going to work really nice. Those two are the same actually apart from one, but I'm going to do something with those. So I'm keeping them to one side. So just if you are using this, um, make sure that you check. So what I've done is I plan on having everyone matted on this black, which will then be layered on top of the envelope. 
like so. So you can see there you get a really nice page. I just want to keep these images whole, I don't want to, you know, do anything to them really. So what I've done is I've cut one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be a six page album. So with your envelope, now my ones are four and a half by nine and a half, I believe. Yeah, by nine and a half. You want to cut off the open end so that we're left with a pocket, but keep the open ends because I'm probably going to make another little funny album with these ends as well. So I have cut them, let me just bring this in, five and three quarters. So you're cutting away this end here. So five and three quarters, like so. All right, now I've already got all mine, but I will keep these because I'll probably do another album. But you want six of those, okay? Because then we're going to use both sides. Then you're going to need 12 pieces of this black card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Well, how can that be four and a quarter? Oh, yeah, because they're four and a half. That's right. Yeah, and then they will layer on top. And you want 12 pieces because they're going to go on the front and obviously on the back of every page. And then you will have your 12 images or pattern paper if you don't have this magazine. Okay? Okay, so what I'm doing now is just sticking down all of my images, or this will be your pattern paper, to the black mat. So I'm just using my wet glue here and just sticking them down just so you've got that nice even frame around them all and this is when you just want to check that you've got all the right amount so you will end up having your six one two three four five six pages and then your total black mats and pattern paper will be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay so get them all stuck down so they're like this okay so i have started to attach my hinges and i am doing acetate hinges something completely new something i just thought up so um i'm hoping it's all going to work so obviously this isn't together yet but the idea is, is that we're going to put um eyelets through this here and then i'm going to make the case and the whole thing's going to be attached with ribbon or string so um, that's where I've got to. So I've already done five of them and I've put my acetate on them all. You can just see it there and they've all got their mats on the back and they are looking really, really nice. So what you're going to need to do is grab some acetate. This is quite a flimsy, thin acetate sheet and you need to cut it down to uh, one and three quarters by three and three quarters. Okay, so you'll need six of these. Now, Mine are covered in glue because I've got my mat covered because I've been using Tombow, but um, I can clean all that off afterwards. Now what you want to do is grab, I'm using the um, half inch, just under half inch actually, uh, red tape. Red tape is really good for acetate and it will stick it really nicely. So I'm just going to run, if I just do that and bring it up so you can see what I've done. So I've just ran a strip of it on one of the long sides, doesn't matter which side, just pop it along there and you can just see, okay. With any red tape or any double sided tape, make sure you go over it with your bone folder just to get all the air bubbles out and any white kind of cloudy bits that you can see and then it's completely adhered nicely. Now grab your pocket, so your envelope. Now my grid that I've got here is in half inch increments so I can just sit this anywhere on my grid just line it up with some lines there in the corner down here. So I know that that's half an inch here and then that's one inch coming out to this marker here. You want to stick this in so it's overhanging by one inch. So I can just, for example there, I've gone past this line and I'm up to this line here. So I know that you are sticking roughly, well it's not roughly, it will be exact, you'll be sticking actually onto your envelope three quarters of an inch of the acetate. Okay. Now you want to come down and up from the uh, top and bottom, make sure it's equal. Okay. Don't worry too much 
if it's not because you're going to then use this as your guide for every other one so every one will be perfect so I'm coming up there one inch and this is one inch okay so you want to be one inch down here and one inch here if you want to do your acetate from top to bottom you can but I just don't feel there's a need for it plus I like the look of this so I'm just going to take off my backing and so again I can come up one inch here go out one inch and stick that down okay whatever grid you've got if even if it's in centimeters just make sure it's all equal okay so that piece is now stuck down you can see what it looks like okay now next when you do your next envelope so if I bring in did I cut a spare I think I've got a spare here yeah so say you've got this one here you will then stick that over the top okay and then stick your acetate on this and just line it up with the acetate underneath okay so you don't need to make sure you've got all this measurement correct each time now you can just use that base one as a guide for all your other ones okay so once you've stuck your acetate down then you want to stick these mats on top so it just conceals that acetate a little bit so I'm just going to stick that one on there and this is my last one to go on the back. I thought the Norway one was nice, but it's very dark, so I've put it right at the back <laughs> with something colourful on the front of it. Okay, so I'm just going to stick those two down. Oh, and I forgot to say, because I've just gone to stick this one down, with this side here, just run another bit of red tape just over the top side of your acetate, so it will help it stick to your... Um, your mat there, this piece that we're going to stick over the top. Okay, so I've just stuck that down, then I've put glue all over this, and then I can just line it all up there. Okay, so just make sure you, and you only need to do it on one side because on that side there's no acetate, it's just normal. Okay, okay, so everything is stuck down, and then all I'm doing is I did have glue and stuff smeared just from my fingers on the acetate, so I've just got some tissue. And you just buff over it, just like you're doing your polishing. If you make sure you've got the glare of like the daylight on it, then you'll be able to see all your marks. But now that was the last one I've done. They're all back to being really nice, clear, shiny pieces of acetate. So this is now where you should be. You should have your six pages, all with your acetate hinge. So next we will do our hole punching and our eyelet. Now if you don't have the eyelets, it doesn't matter, but it does just give it a nice effect so again I've got all these old ones I have brought more but I want to use I hope I've got enough I'm going to use the black because I think it will really stand out so I need 12 okay so I've got 12 black there so what I'm going to do is just bring one in it doesn't matter which one because you can still rearrange the order even after we've done this and it's entirely up to you really where you put it I'm going to come in let's have a look here I'm just going to um, come in at, you might have to help it off a little bit depending on your, there we go. So that, on that first one I have come down, I'd say an inch, an inch from the bottom and then I'll do an inch, sorry an inch from the top and then an inch from the bottom so it's about there, which is about where I was going to do it. So again this is your first one so just get this as lined up as you can you don't want these to be crooked because otherwise let me even I'm struggling to see I'm just going to bring in there we go it's a bit better let me just you line up the bottom one you won't have to do this on every one this is just your first one but I'm just going to do a little mark just making sure it is the same so now that's half an inch and I'm coming in, which I think, yeah, my eyeballing is pretty okay, so I'm happy with that. So I've just put a little pin mark there and then I can get that other one cut out. Okay, so you can just see, there you go, my two hole punched holes. Then grab your next one and sit it under, line everything up, just like you did when you've done your acetate like so I'd make sure your cards are lined up not your acetate okay because if your acetate's still a bit out it doesn't matter but make sure your cards are lined up when they're in place 
just sit it over the hole below. Actually, I think it'd be better over the top because you can then trace it. It kind of clips in then. Okay. And again, like so. And just keep doing that on all of your pieces until you have every single one hole punched. Okay, so next we want to make our front and back. So our kind of front cover, back page as such. So I've got these, um, just the chipboard, it's one mil. It's just the, the card from the back of the paper packs that I always use. And you just want to cut, you want two pieces that are six and a quarter by, oh, what have I got there? It's not an exact square. Six and a quarter by six and a half. Okay, so you want two pieces. Then this is the paper from the magazine. So I've just, I've used two pieces. I've already done my front, which I'll show you in a minute. But I've got the blue, which I'm gonna cut down in a minute, and this pink. So I'm gonna have the pink as the back page, and then the blue is gonna be inside. So you wanna cut it down to, um, well this is eight and one eighth by eight and one, no. <laughs> eight and one eighth, yeah, eight and one eighth squared. Eight by eight's fine. I think it was just that's the it was the the width of the paper but then I cut off kind of the white um, kind of join where it was joined to the magazine so that's why it's that funny size but eight by eight will be fine grab your chipboard and you just want to stick it into the middle of this okay so either use your wet glue or your tear tape I'm just using mine here I think this is the half inch one so I'm just going to go over it and cover all of this okay so I've covered it all so I'm just making sure it's all stuck down like so, and then just peel off all of your backing, and then just bring in your paper and just stick it in the middle, as long as you've got a rough, even amount on each side. And again, just make sure it's all nicely stuck down, and then you just want to fold in all the sides. And then we're going to glue in our edges, so I've just got my wet glue here, you want to Kind of come up the side and cover the square. There'll be a little square that's formed where you've kind of got score lines there. Just you can see there what I've just kind of covered. Come up about an inch there, come out an inch there, and then just do the square. And then oh, you're just going to bring the square right over so the score lines now line up with your chipboard and just grab your bone folder and just work in all that glue and the chipboard will just absorb it all so make sure you get it all out because then you know you've got a really nice join you can see there what I've done so I've just now burnished in along the chipboard the corner there with the paper so you get a nice join so just do that on all of your three corners okay so that's all my corners in and then you just want to apply glue along the rest of the paper that's overhanging. Get right into the chipboard um, edge there as well. And then you're just gonna fold that whole piece over. Really get a nice fold around that chipboard. And again, just burnish it, squeezing out any glue. And again, just repeat that on all three sides. Okay, with my blue piece here, I'm just cutting it down so it's six and a quarter by six, because remember we're not working with an exact square. So just trim that down. Okay, make sure you've got the right orientation, so obviously one of the sides is six and a quarter by six, wasn't it? So you just want to make sure you lie it down the right way, and it will give you a little border. So again, it's about a one eighth of an inch. So, sorry, no, it's, it's a quarter of an inch we've gone down in increments. Yeah, so one, inch, eight, one eighth of an inch border. So that's my back. So you will repeat that twice, so you've got a front and back. And now I've just got a nice piece of covered chipboard. And if I bring in my cover, which I'm really pleased with, this is what I've done. So I'm going to talk you through the eyelets in a minute. I have put corner protectors on all four corners of the style of this album which I have in mind and then there's the other side there so this is a nice big mat to obviously put some journaling on which I'm probably going to decorate a bit more but basically I've used the three cards that were left and just cut them down I've put them on some foam that one's stuck directly onto the board this is on foam and then this is stuck on there 
and then all of these little bits explore adventure the briefcase suitcase even <laughs> don't take a briefcase on holiday uh, wonderlust and travel are from this sticker set here which is wonder by jen allison my mind's eye so i've just used some of that and i think i might use a few more on a couple of the pages as well maybe but i think it looks really really nice so you will have two of these decide which one's your front and back so obviously i've got all the colors there that i've used from the thing the thing from the set so again make sure it's in the right orientation like so so if you have it that way you'll see see it's taller so just make sure you've got it in the right right way now my holes that i've punched so you will need grab yourself a ruler and you want to come up by two and one eighth of an inch okay so from the bottom here two and one eighth of an inch and again two and one eighth of an inch and then come in uh, three eighths of an inch okay so do that so if I do it on this bottom one because then what you'll do is you'll just use this once you've done that one you will this is what I'm going to do with this one is I'm just then going to put little poke two holes through and then that's easy to, to do but I'll show you on this one so again make sure I've got it the right way so just realized I haven't cut my paper the right way the paper's now going that way but hey ho doesn't matter so two and one eighth of an inch and I'm coming in three eighths of an inch one two three so this is why this Tim Holtz reel is handy because it's got the increments on this side so all I need to do is that one marker there and then again come down and do the same okay and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line mine over just to check yeah I'm just about there I can see them both through here but I'm just going to go and line mine up perfectly okay but that's what you want to do there so two and one eighth two and one eighth and come in by three eighths of an inch so now I've done those grab your you can use a poker tool for this if not, but just use the, the pliers that you get with your eyelets because they do the job perfectly. Okay, get rid of any of the bulky bits. Be careful there, not to ruin my paper. There we go. And then I've used silver eyelets, so I'm just going to bring in two silver ones there and bring in my bigger pliers. And again, just pop them over each of your holes. You're working with chipboard, so you do have to really work them in there, but then you'll get a nice, there we go, they kind of pop in. Okay, and then just squash them down. Okay, so you should now have, you'll have a back, front and back with the eyelets like so, so when they're together, Look, they perfectly meet up now. I can see, you can kind of see my hand moving underneath. So it's looking really neat. Now, I, no, I'll move on to the next bit. So now I'm going to add some, I've added in an extra. So I'm adding in these pages. So these here, so it's now going to turn into, yes, yeah, so these are six by six and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and the idea is there's going to be, you're going to open the page to one of these first and then you're going to have one of these behind and then another one of these behind and then another page and I just I don't know again this is what happens when I just think of things to do I just like the thought of having this with a pocket here which we're going to make our mats for and then you turn the page and then you've just got a bigger mat there to have even more photos so six pieces of six by six and then you want to mark your holes all along them here which I've done so with these ones here you want to come in at so I'm coming in by a quarter of an inch and you're coming up here from two inches okay so come in quarter of an inch and then come up by two inches and mark a little hole and just use your pliers again punch through again come down two inches and come in at a quarter that's the same there so if you if your measurement's slightly different to mine get your piece of card so if I do the bit I haven't lie it over 
it's six by six so it doesn't really matter lie it over and then just put a little marker like so okay and punch your holes through that way then once you punch the holes through use that one again as a guide so I'm going to pop it on the top front of this one it seems a little bit different than six by six no it is that way and then just punch through so again you're tracing that circle so you don't have to do the measurement on every single card okay so do that on all six pieces and then again I'm now going to punch my eyelets through all of them hoping that I've got enough silver pieces which I think I do so yeah just like you did on your front just go through now again if you don't have them you might have those little plastic circle stickers that you put on your punched holes which another they're yeah, perfectly fine to use so any it's just to really kind of protect them from being turned all the time okay so they are now all done so they've all got their eyelets on them now one thing I needed to mention which I almost forgot is because the where the eyelets are positioned because I didn't want to go into my image too much because I stuck this down first before I put the eyelets I've had to trim my acetate and basically I've taken a quarter of an inch where's my scissors I use my red ones I've taken a quarter of an inch off the side the outer side okay so I'm going to eyeball it because I can roughly see on this one and I've just trimmed it off okay so it's easy to do otherwise you get it overhanging all right but that's because I didn't um, I decorated it first so what I would say is if you're confident you know what you're doing line up your pages and imagine that quarter of an inch was still on there okay and then just do a pencil mark where the eyelet sits you can see the difference now from where the eyelet is now if this piece still had the quarter of an inch that's where your page would be that's where your holes would be sorry so the card still fits in this doesn't interfere with any of these pieces but if you don't want to cut your acetate and you think oh no I think I'm going to mess it all up then just bring these in by a quarter of an inch or the, 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 the proper position that it should be if I do it that way it's probably confusing you so if you imagine there you go that's where it would be I brought it in by a quarter of an inch just do your pencil marks and then you know where to punch it Okay, hopefully that's made sense, but I've had to just cut mine and bring them in a little bit. So this is how it's going to be. One of these, and then a page, uh, yeah, then another one, then a page, and another one, page, another one, page, page, <laughs> and then it ends with a page. Okay, so they're all in like so. And they're going to be sandwiched between that and that. So you be, it, it's turned into quite a nice little size, um, little album now. So I will do the mats, and I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to be using ribbon or these binder hoops, binder rings. Okay, so I'm still working on that. But now we need our mats. Okay, so I'm going to have black um, mats on all of my pages. So I've cut these pieces here, which are five and a quarter by five and three quarters okay I've already stuck one down on the back there I've already popped all my tape on this one and I've done my other um, six pages so you're going to need 12 pieces of this particular size in obviously whatever color it is that you're using you may not want to you may want to you may choose to just put your photos directly onto your card it's entirely up to you so but the um, this particular craft card that I use which is 280 GSM it's the Ducrafts um, brand it's very strong <clears throat> so it would be fine on its own but I do like to add my mats now you might want to layer on top of this again so it's entirely up to you so you should now have six of them that's all of mine and what I've started doing so I've got one page um, sorry one of these little pockets then a page pocket page and so on all the way through I've got my front cover and I've got my back so what I'm going to do is just pop it through some of these ring um, binder rings and just see how it looks and then I can decide whether I want to use ribbon and then I'm going to talk you through all of the 
um, little paper mats that we're going to have coming out of the tops of all of these little pockets. Okay, so that's it there with the uh, little binder rings. Now the size that I've used, which is actually perfect, is one and one and a quarter. Yeah, one and a quarter, one and three eighth diameter. Look how lovely that now looks. I think what I might just do is tie some ribbon in a bow just on there, just to make it look nice. And now when it opens up, and you've got room as well for any bulky, you know, any pictures and stuff. So. And it doesn't move about too much, which is good. So these are going to look great. And I'm going to print all my pictures in Polaroid. So they're all going to have a white frame anyway. So the white against the black is going to really stand out. Um, and obviously these are just so strong with that acetate and with the um, ringlets, ringlets, with the eyelets around them. This is, you know, it's going to last you forever. It's not going to... Um, I might put corner um, edges protectors on this base. I'm not sure. I guess I should really. I don't think I've got any left of those ones which have got quite an art deco look which is why I thought it worked really nice. So I have some plain ones which I'll probably put on the back but these two are going to look lovely to just have you know um, just some journaling on and then I might put like I've got lots of flight tickets and things like that which I can pop in these. So now I'm going to make all the little mats, paper mats, photo mats for them. Okay, so to make those little photo mats, I'm just cutting from the scraps from the actual pages. So they came from A4 cards, so this is just part of that. So I'm again trying to use all the bits that I have and not cut into unnecessary pieces. So these are four by four by five and five eighths of an inch, and you'll need six of those. Now if you want to mat and layer on top of these, you can, I'm not going to, I'm just going to put my photo probably smack bang on there. Then what I've gone and done is I've die cut 12 of these two inch circles, and then 12 of these, um, which are um, one and a half, and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to pop these, I think that punch is a little blunt, but basically one's going to go over the front, one's going to go over the back, like so, and then one of them on the front, and one of those on the back. And you want to stick it halfway down, so half of your circle is stuck on the card. And then I've got all that there for my Polaroid photo, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is slow, I'm starting to lose my voice. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some of my glue, just splodge it on one side, like so. Grab your card, pop it halfway on, and just make sure you've got equal amounts overhanging. And then we'll get my other circle. You only really need to put glue on one half, but just put it all on, it doesn't really matter. And line it up with the top half and then the rest will all work itself out like so and then just stick these on top now if you want to round off the bottom because that will help your photo mat go in and out of the pocket and then I'll bring in my album I've already done my other six photo mats so you can see now I find the one that I need to pop this in, I think it's right at the back, it is, and then that one can slide perfectly in the top of my pocket, and just pokes out the top. So I've gone and popped all the rest in and that is all ready now for me to add my photos. So I'm going to choose a holiday that I need to print the photos of and pop in a scrapbook, so somewhere in Europe I think and I'm going to fill it and I think it's going to look really good because I know how many photos, I can probably get two on here on each of these so each page is going to hold four then each photo mat holds one on each side so yeah, I can get quite a few photos in this but I really, really love it so there's a close up again of the front cover I'm going to tie some ribbon on this which you'll see in the photos and maybe have a little dangle hanging from it you can also hole punch these um, stick an eyelet in there as well and then pop some ribbon through which I've done on other albums and I'm probably going to put my little corners on the back there, but I think in terms of the tutorial, I've shown you everything you need to make your own little acetate hinge 
ring binder mini travel album with envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Anyway, there you have it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.